You've probably heard of the debt snowball, but have you heard of the debt hammer? People think that we are crazy for this. Why on earth would you lever up to build a huge portfolio, get all these tax benefits, and then pay the whole dang thing off? There is a reason and a strategy behind it. This is what the masters of the game do. And in today's episode, we're going to tell you how and why we're going to pay off all of our debt. Spoiler alert, I have like $17 million of debt. Caleb's sitting on, I think, four and growing. I'm on put four. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk about the four phases and we're going to focus on uh, on the dead hammer. So here we go. <laughs> So we're going to talk about the four phases really quick. We share this all the time on the channel, but there are only four phases that matter to build your business. We have learned this from many masters. This is what everyone is doing who wins the game. You have a build phase. This is where you are building the income that you need to hit your goal. So that you're, in our case, this is where you're buying the bulk of your initial portfolio. These are yep. likely not going to be class A properties. You're going to build something that takes a little bit of work because you are going to solve those problems and make a boatload of cash. But you build first. Then you stabilize. That is where you're not trying to you're not trying to renovate your rough units. You're trying to take, hey, with the pieces I have, um, is there anything that I can do for light fixes to optimize the rent to get the uh, to get everyone paying to make sure that I'm at least ninety percent of my tenants are paying and the income is stable. Optimize is where I go after that last percent, uh, the last ten percent of leasing. We're doing upgrades to the building. They may need like a massive new roof. Maybe we're building a park at one of our campuses, but you're doing the things that you're going to do to make it the best possible asset it can be. After that, you pay off all the debt. And this is where people get lost or go, that's crazy. Um, Originally, I thought there was three phases. I thought it was you build, you stabilize, and you pay off the debt. Problem is, if you don't optimize, there's not enough global cash flow to make a dent in the debt. And so you have to keep refinancing forever and it's going to take you 50 years. If you can optimize this, you can create an income stream that can actually roll, roll off all of the debt, which is insane. Um, So Caleb, let's talk a little bit about your portfolio that you've built and where you're trying to get it before we get to the debt hammer. So Caleb, you've been doing this for about a year and a half, right? Yeah. Around there. Okay. So you mine real estate for a year and a half. You have 53 units, four transactions, uh, two 10 plexes, one eight plex and one twenty five plex, which I have seen in person. And it is beautiful. Best Tremendous. asset I own. Yes. Not even absolutely close. phenomenal. Um, when you are putting together these deals, what is the ultimate goal that you are trying to reach? Like in your build phase, what are you trying to build to before you get Oof. to the stabilize and optimize? That is a great question. I used to think it was, I was very similar to you and Cody when you guys started. Say, hey, let's hit the 100 units and let's do it. And then since then, it's kind of the mindset's gotten bigger. So for me right now, I'm kind of eyeballing the 250 mark is where I want to get to. Okay. Uh, why so a few more years ahead of units? Why, why, why 250? That's a great question. And it's just kind of, it feels like a number that's high enough at the same time. Like 100 units, like I saw you guys kind of breeze past that. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, that's doable. I'm already halfway there, over halfway there at 53. I'm like, there's way more I can do because I am nowhere near of where I want to be when I start debt hammering. Yeah. Well, and and to be fair, check out multifamilystrategy.com because you're right. Breezing through your first hundred units actually is pretty easy. It's not hard. It's not easy in effort. It's easy in strategy. It's super simple. It's yes, a lot of work. It's not that and you've seen that. Yeah. And no, I, I would make the argument, is it more or less work than you expect, expected when you got started? Different amount of work, different kind of work. That is what I thought. It's, the guy, the biggest thing that I understood is like things take three times as long was the biggest thing on repairs, but on acquisitions, it's not that complicated. It's a very simple formula. A lot of people out there try to overcomplicate this stuff. It's, it's really not that complicated. Yep. It is extremely simple, uh, extremely replicable. Uh, there's a yes. few skills you need to learn. And if you passed algebra one in middle school, uh, you can do all the math required. And even if you didn't, you can figure it out. Because uh, I'd say you probably need to pass fifth grade. grade. If, you, if you pass fifth grade, you're going to be all right. If you yeah. don't pass fifth grade, real estate's not for you. Yeah. Well, and, and funny enough, I, I, I actually know someone who barely made it past fifth grade who's uh, farther than me in real estate. Yep, um, I know exactly what you're talking about, the Mr. Lumberjack. Yeah, Mr. Lumberjack. Uh, there, there are people of all levels. Granted, he's also probably the smartest investor out there. Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord, I will plug him here because he is worth plugging. Amazing operator, fantastic mathematician, uh, really, really, really all around smart guy, channel worth following. Uh, but yeah, you can do, like, basically the message here is any idiot can do this. Um, you yep. do have to put in the work on the front end, which is the build phase. Let's talk about 
paying it off. So you're going to get to 250 units. I think you're going to breeze past that because it took you a year and a half as a 20 year old to get to 53. So you're a fifth of the way there. And to be fair, you're still a child. Uh, okay. <laughs> 20 years old. Most people have not graduated college yet. Like that is, you are young, 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 and already having that much success as you mature as an investor and you're already well on your way. Um, Five Xing your portfolio by doubling your experience is going to take you no time. I, I am I'm going to call the shot right now. I think in two years you're going to be at 250 units. Wow, I call my shot for me. Now you're knowing what else I'm doing on the side. You're just calling the shot for me, okay? Well, you've done this in a year and a half. I think in the next year and a half because you'll still be 21 in a year and a half. You'll be on the back end of 21. Um, I I think you're going to make it. Why not? Or it'll just be 22. What, whatever. I don't know your birthday. Okay, so. Yeah, you're going to get to 250 deep. units. Um, you're there. Uh, you stabilize while you build, by the way. You don't just like, you don't leave your properties to rot. Um, all these things. Absolutely blend together. Uh, think of those, you know, those little lights that like change colors and like waves where it goes from like blue to green to yellow. And you're like, somebody that's exactly caught. what one and two are. Yes. Yep. You know, you get just caught staring at it. I was like, Ooh, is it green or yellow right now? It's making the transition. Uh, that is how these phases go. It's not specific blocks of like, Oh, I made it out of build. We're in to stabilize you're stabilizing while you're building and you shift into a phase that's heavier on stabilizing and then you'll shift into optimizing and then you'll start rolling down the debt on some things and you may still be buying properties. Um, it the, the phases all do blend together, but those are your general phases. You're going to have an emphasis on one throughout. Once it's you get not to like those people. Yeah. I was going to say, it's not like those people when you're eating dinner, Thanksgiving dinner and you have everything separated on your plate. That's not how this works. Everything's blended straight together. It's, it's not that cut and dry. Exactly. You have your categories, but your categories will, in fact, touch. Uh, you picky eaters, uh, I apologize. That is just how the game is played. You are never going to succeed in real estate. Let's answer the main question. Why would you pay off your debt? You get all the way there. You build your business. You can keep building. You can scale the Cardone levels where you have a, you know, $6 billion of real estate. Um, why are you going to pay off your debt? Why am I personally? Yeah. Why would you pay off your debt? You get all the way through. For me, it's just the fact that it eliminates all liability. No matter how, like, let's say you pay down all but, say, your 75% equity stake or whatever, and you still have 25% there. And if something does hit the fan, you could still lose absolutely everything you've built, absolutely every dollar you invested into your business. And it becomes a certain point where you're just not acquiring anymore. Like, there's always, like, deals here and there, whatever, like a home run falls in your lap, you do it. There comes a certain point in your business where that's just not worth it for you anymore. Mm -hmm. And especially another thing on top of that, most people don't think about, I don't know your take on this, but just as we inflate more and more and more, the amount of debt you have doesn't change. Correct. So that, that same amount of debt as you, as the economy, like, I don't know, we're on a run of my train right now. So we'll see what happens. But our amount of debt in 20, 30 years is going to seem so minuscule compared to like what our assets are worth. Mm -hmm. if, you might as well just pay them off. Absolutely agree. The other big thing is this is what all the masters of the game do. You get to a point where you don't need more money and everyone wants exactly. more and everyone wants to scale and everyone wants to tax or whatever. You hit a point where you have more money than you need. You pay off your darn debts and then you keep scaling from there. The, yep. the least sexy thing that you can do is build a huge portfolio, become well-known for it, and then lose the default whole on absolutely everything. Like all these big syndicators right now in Houston. There, Yes. Um, there's a lot of things that you, there's a lot of ways you can get burned by scaling forever. It's why it's so important to identify your original goal. For me, I wanted to stabilize my portfolio, retire my wife from teaching and move to Texas. My house is being built in Texas right now. Once I get there, $20,000 a month, stable, like where I'm not doing projects because we have a huge portfolio, but there's a lot of projects in that thing where it's stabilized banging out 20,000 a month and we're already over that. That's where it needs to be. Now for the portfolio Cody and I built, it's like, okay, well, why not stop exactly there? I'm going to do a few more projects because those projects are going to help me pay off the portfolio quicker. So I'm adding stability. So what you typically do is you hit your goal. You need to surpass it by a bit. And then once it's all stable, you have this huge base of cash flow. You pay off your least expensive debt first. So here we are. 10 minutes into the video, and I'm going to explain the debt hammer right here. So for those who stuck along for the whole ride, I apologize. I do not try to lead you guys along to get you to watch these. However, it worked. You're here. Debt hammer. <laughs> debt snowball. 
actually, let's start there. Debt snowball is where you pay off everything. You come up with a plan, you throw X amount of money at it. And then once you pay off one debt, you roll to the next one, you roll to the next one. And all of a sudden all your debt's gone. Problem with this. If you keep paying down your mortgages, the risk is now on you. You have all this cash in the deal. And if something happens and you default and lose it, it's gone. You want the risk on the lender until you've saved up enough in an account to pay off your smallest loan. And it actually does. I'll tell you right now, it doesn't take that long. If you have a few loans that are like $200,000 on a triplex or two in your, in your big portfolio, Cody and I did a half million dollar cash out recently. I pulled enough money out of a property, sold someone into it. So I actually earned it. It's not like I pulled new debt. I brought income great enough to pay off an entire debt. Actually, two of my property's debts in whole. When you own nothing on them, the risk is gone. So you take, keep the risk off you, sideline all the cash flow until you have enough to whack one debt in its entirety. And then you write a check, you pay it off, that debt's gone. That is the way to play the game. That is the debt hammer. It works better on a risk basis than the debt, debt snowball. Yes. Dealing with real estate. Way better. It just, it just, it comes out of the fact is like, I've got one more mortgage payment left default. It's like, can you imagine anything more deflating in your entire existence than that? <laughs> no, granted, you're probably not going to lose the property on your last mortgage payment because you don't know that much. You're just going to pay it off and be done. But that is the, that is what the risk is. You have all this cash in here, but you could still lose it. The goal is how do we own it? How do we never lose it? You want stability? Get rid of debt. And you know what? It's worked well for Dave. Uh, last time he, he has like $700 million of assets and he doesn't use it like a debt. What we're going to do is we're going to lever to our goal and then we're going to delever all the way down when we own our freedom. Because you don't want to lose the freedom. I just recognize that in today's economy with the rate that we print money, you're going to have to lever and play the game to get ahead. But once you're ahead, lock in your gains, pay off your debt and be done. Because then if you want to scale, scale in cash or uh, one of our good yeah. friends uh, do, they have hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate, by the way, in equity, 20% debt in their portfolio. They pay their stuff all the way off and then they buy new things levered and then pay those things all the way off. You can utilize debt however you want, but the goal is to pay off your debts and you keep a lower and lower and lower debt uh, loan to value in your portfolio as you play the game. And that's how you don't lose it. You go from Right now, Cody and I are about, uh, uh, markets have affected things a little bit. We're probably around 60% loan to value right now in our portfolio. Um, we just did a really good price deal, so maybe it's less than that. Um, at some point, we'll roll down to 45% and then at 25%. And at some point, we'll pay off the debt. But as you play the game, you put less and less and less risk the bigger machine you build. And that's Caleb exactly. thinking about those things at 20 years old. It's going to make all the difference. I appreciate that. I sure hope so. It will. It will. Because because you're right. It, it, at 250 units, if you don't pay that off, you're going to have to keep scaling to meet that portfolio. And then you're stuck in an endless cycle of, I have to do more deals to keep up with my debt. It is realistically what happens, especially in a debt market like today. Oh, yeah. This is, I mean, we could say 7% actually isn't that bad. It's just how quick rates went up, but that's a whole different video. <laughs> it's, the, it's the rate that they went up that's the problem. 100%. 100%. Seven is fine. A lot of people had 13% debts. It didn't matter that much because pricing, well, you know, you're buying a house for $95,000 at 13%. Things were, in, things were in accordance, but that's a whole different topic for a whole different video. <laughs> a whole different topic, a whole different video. The message for today, pay off your debts. Uh, I, I should change our slogan. It's how do I own it and how do I own it? Put capital letters on that. You own it by getting your name on title. You own it when you don't have any debt and you own no one nothing except for the government who will continue to tax you forever. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Um, that's it for today's video. If you want a free course, you want to learn how to put this together, there is a link. Uh, we even have a free spreadsheet, I think, below that. Uh, but seriously, go into those, click those links. They're 10 minutes long. It's the method. And longs? I think I said longs. Editor, keep that in there because it's funny. Um, <laughs> guys, it's 10 minutes long. You can learn the whole model. Click the darn link you'll thank yourself. And if you want more information on videos like this, subscribe to the channel. Um, Caleb, how do people reach you if they have questions for you and how you scale so quickly? Because you are absolutely outpacing me um, by, you know, you're a decade younger and you have more real estate than I had when I was 30. 
Yeah, best best way to reach me is on Instagram. I'm at Caleb.hommel. I can't get rid of the dot yet because the guy won't give me his account. So we're getting there. Caleb.hommel. And uh, I know you have a YouTube channel that you're going to be spending more time on. I know it's in its infancy, but... Um, we'll bring people- that out a little bit. Yeah, we'll bring that out a little bit later. But yeah, that's still building up. Okay, okay. I'll drop a link to it here as soon as you're ready to, to do that. So if you're watching this uh, a month from now, there'll be a link in the chat for Caleb's channel. All right, without further ado, we'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching.